thinking at the time and speaking at the time and studying and reflecting at the time, ladies and gentlemen, when a page of Stephen Hawking is far more awe-inspiring than anything in Genesis or Exodus. Think about what is involved in the event horizon, the point where time begins and ends, the point where the black hole starts, the point where matter and light disappear. Consider it carefully. One of Hawking's friends says if he knew he was going to and he wanted by going to the edge of the event horizon and tipping over within, because in theory then, you could see the past and the future. Except, of course, you wouldn't have enough time. But that's innate in physics, not innate in the unfairness of life. Think about that and compare it to the burning bush. <laughs> or some other sinister fairy tale. Of course we don't live without awe. We don't live without a sense of the majesty and tremendousness of, of our universe. And nor do we live in contempt for ourselves, but we don't mistake the fairy tale for the real inspiring stuff. We don't, we don't throw away the truffle and chew on the wrapper till our mouths go dry, in other words. Of the millions and millions of false gods that have been created, is it likely that they were all equal perceptions of the same truth, from the Aztecs to the Buddhists? Or are they all equally improvised creations by man? Again, there's no possible way of disputing that proposition and making it even seem equal. None. 